So basically, the students have to spend over 500 hours studying these dictators. They literally tell us that Kim Jong-il wrote 500 books in a year. In the middle school, students have to learn how to shoot and how to fight in case there is a war. Welcome to my channel. My name is Yumi Park and I am a North Skin Defector human rights activist. So guys, today in this video, I am going to blow your mind. We are going to talk about top 6 the most bizarre wars only exist in North Korean schools. A lot of people know that North Korea is unique and weird and bizarre. However, I'm sure nobody really would have guessed the or fathomed the insanity and the strangeness of this regime. The number one word that North Korean students must follow is that about supreme leader. So North Korean students each year they have to spend 171 hours just studying Kim Jong Un and how great he is. So the material examples like how great he is is like apparently he was a professional racer with their, his yacht and he won the race at nine years old. And how he was as a toddler few years old child, how he won the, uh, how he knew how to drive the golf resort golf cart. This kind of things so that North Korean children have to dedicate their 171 hours of uh, studying time to study in at school. But not only this, they also have to spend 171 hours over studying on Kim Jong-il, the father of Kim Jong-un, and another 171 hours studying about Kim Il-sung, the first Kim dictator. So basically, the students have to spend over 500 hours studying these dictators. I mean, but the things that the materials are so beyond bizarre. Like I still remember as a child in school, learning about how the you know dear leader can show up in the east mountain, but next second he can like show up in the west mountain. And when he writes words, like literally, guys, if he writes on a notebook, that words have a power to fly around. <laughs> and they literally say well, when Kim Il Sung was fighting against Japanese imperialists. He ran out of uh, bullets. So what he do? What did he do? He gathered the rocks and made them into bullets. So this is supernaturalness about how they are gods. Like literally, how they're living gods. How what kind of miracles they can make? They literally tell us that Kim Jong Il wrote 500 books in a year, and how he orchestrated every opera that we have. And of course, you know how the Kims like live with us forever and their body dies, but their spirit is with us forever. It's exactly how the Christianity talking about Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ died bodily, but his spirit is with us forever. Therefore, he knows what we think. And exactly using copy the Bible and telling North Korean children that's exactly what's happening with the Kims. So this is a first number word if you're in North Korean schools. You just imagine that you're going to spend all your time studying about dictators. But the most problem with this is that you cannot fail. The North Korean students can fail at math, can fail at science, but they cannot fail at about the facts about the Kims or the lies about facts, I mean Kims. If they fail to memorizing and show their excellence in this field, they think their like loyalty is low and the parents or family can be punished. So students have to, as if their life depending on it and studying this kind of BS from their school. Number two, forced labor. This is a kind of term that we use, you know, when there's a concentration camp. But in North Korean schools, guys, as old as five years old, I have a toddler like that age right now. It breaks my heart. Like he cannot even like wash his own dishes right now. That kind of kid in North Korea have to be mobilized in the forced labor at least twice a week. So North Korean children, when they go to school, they have to carry their work clothes with them. So in the mornings, they spend their hours to be brainwashed and studying about the 
awesomeness of the dictators. In the afternoons, they have to go work in the manual labor, forced labor, without being paid, without getting fed by the regime. The entire population is a slave to the regime, and they don't even know that they are oppressed. They don't even know that they are enslaved by this dictatorship. Number three, in North Korean schools, every student must learn to fight. So. Even though there is a military that people have to force to go after they graduate from high school in North Korea in the middle school, students have to learn how to shoot and how to fight in case there is a war. And the regime constantly telling us that there's American bastards trying to destroy our country and kill our people. Therefore, we constantly have to be ready. Even though that, including that, those are people are like kids. Literal kids that we all have to go and force to learn how to shoot and prepare to fight for fight in the war. So if there's a war breaks out in North Korea, you know that not only the North Korean soldiers gonna fight, but even children, five years old, are forced to fight in the war. And that is how inhumane this regime is. If this is like not even modern government, they are like coming from some dark age, like 13th century, where. The humanity was not in, enlightened, and that kind of medieval law is the regime forcing onto the people. So number four, you can't leave. So this is a very bizarre thing because in North Korean schools and universities, neither the professors or teachers or students can leave the campus without the chaper, which is a guard minder. And the only time students can leave the campus is when they can go pay the respects to Kim's at the monuments. Other than that, students have no right, right to leave the campus, and it's guarded by the guards. So schools are very strict access, and people no have freedom to go and back and forth between them. Number five, report or. So since child, North Korean children and adult constantly. Uh, informed by the regime that how we need to always look out for dangers, and if there's a slight sign of something strange among our peers or anybody, we have to report on them. And that's why in North Korea, guys, there's no word for friends. Actually, there's only one word for comrade. So it is impossible to have a friend and you share your secrets. I was really shocked when I came to Free World that. A lot of girls have their close girlfriends, and they share the things they cannot even share with their parents, and have these close ties with each other. In North Korea, trust between people got destroyed by the regime. So the regime constantly telling us, you know, looking for, out for the spies and looking out for the strange behaviors in our peers, and we know that they are all doing the same thing like us. And in schools, every Saturday, students have to get. You know, we stand up in in front of a podium and denounce somebody's behavior. It's a literally job for the students to looking for somebody's false behavior because otherwise you get punished if you don't report on somebody. That is a system how it designed that we all have to look for the somebody else's behavior that is problematic, and that's why that trust in this society that is what really. I mean, beautiful and shocks me the most is that how much people trusting each other in this free world. And North Korea, they do not have the luxury. The last one, haircut. I'm sure you guys heard that somewhere before that in North Korea, people do not even have a freedom to choose their haircut. The funny thing though is that before there's always a haircut regulation in North Korea. But what is funny and strange to me is that in 2014, Kim Jong Un demanded. That every North Korean male student in university have to have exact same haircut that he has, <laughs> and that haircut is not even that look good at all. So the regime literally is one day demanded every male student have to look like Kim Jong Un and his haircut. So they all forced hair get that bizarre, weird, ugly looking haircut. It's it's funny because、um, even these rules are so comical. How is it possible? How a dictator can be this ridiculous? Apparently, it's possible, and it really shows that you know when we lose our freedom, that's how we lose our human dignity, and that is why we need the freedom to keep that dignity alive. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and enlightened your views. Please hit the like button 
and share this video please join my patreon and i look forward to guys seeing you next time bye